Hi friends, welcome to all. In this video, we are going to see the PyCut Tracer activity investigating a VLAN implementation. Here we can see our addressing table. Also, we will go through the objectives of this PyCut Tracer activity. In part 1, observe broadcast traffic in a VLAN implementation. In part 2, observe broadcast traffic without VLANs. Then in part 3, complete reflection questions. Also, here we will go through the background. In this activity, we will observe how broadcast traffic is forwarded by the switches when VLANs are configured and when VLANs are not configured. Now, we will come to part 1. Observe broadcast traffic in a VLAN implementation. Coming to step 1, ping from PC1 to PC6. Here we can see in our topology PC1 and uh, uh, PC6. Here we can see both are in different VLANs. So PC1 is in VLAN 10 and PC6 in uh, VLAN 30. Right. So uh, wait for all the link lights to turn to green. Yes, everything is in green. To accelerate this process, uh, click fast forward time located in the bottom yellow toolbar. Here we can see that fast forward time. Anyway, now it's everything in green. Click the simulation tab and use the add symbol PDU tool. Click on PC1 and then click on PC6. Then we have to click the capture or forward button to step through the process. Observe the ARP requests as they traverse the network. When the buffer full window appears, click the view previous events button. Coming to our topology, first of all we will change our mode from this real time to uh, simulation. Right and here we are going to select uh, this uh, add symbol PDU. Uh, we are going to send from PC1 to PC6. Right, here we can see that. And you know, here, here we are going to give a capture or forward. Here we can see it goes to S2, then it goes to S1, then S3, PC7, and then to this PC4. Here we can see it shows failed. Here we can see uh, they sent uh, the ARP uh, in the same VLAN. Uh, that's why uh, uh, it goes to PC7 and PC4. Uh, from S1 it's bro broadcasted to PC7 because it's the same VLAN, VLAN 10. Uh, and also we can see uh, in the S3 it goes to PC4. Coming to D, where the ping successful Y. Yes, here we have seen uh, these uh, pings uh, failed. In the beginning itself, I told uh, this PC1 and PC6 are in different VLAN. Uh, PC1 is in VLAN 10 and PC6 in VLAN 30. He here we can see uh, uh, they are separated logically. So if you want to uh, communicate uh, these uh, different VLANs, so we have to use either a router or a layer 3 switch. Now we will go to E. Look at the simulation panel. Where did S3 send the packet after receiving it? Yes, we have seen that uh, uh, from S3 uh, it goes to PC4 because uh, this PC4 also in uh, VLAN 10 uh, where this uh, our uh, ARP originated. Here we can see that. S3, yes, here we can see that. S3, PC4. S3 sent it to PC4 because it was on the same VLAN as PC1, that is VLAN 10. Here we can see in normal operation, when S2 receives a broadcast frame on one of its ports, it forwards the frame out all other ports. Notice that S2 only sends the ARP request out faster than 0 slash 1 to S1. Also notice that S3 only sends the ARP request out f0 slash 11 to pc4 pc1 and pc4 both belong to vlan 10 pc6 belongs to vlan 30 because the broadcast traffic is contained within the vlan pc6 never receives the arp request from pc1 because pc4 is not the destination it discards the arp request the ping from pc1 fails because pc1 never receives an arp replay now we will come to step 2 from PC1 to PC4. Coming to A. Click the new button under the scenario 0. Drop down tab. Now click on the add a simple PDU icon on the right side of the packet tracer and ping from PC1 to PC4. 
right here we are going to click new right and uh, here we are going to uh, select uh, add a simple pdu then from pc1 to pc4 right then click the capture or forward button to step through the process observe the arp requests as they traverse the network when the buffer full window appears so click the view previous events button yes here we can see two packets one is icmp and the other is arp now we are going to capture or forward so that uh, this pc should get the uh, mac address of pc4 capture or forward we can see it goes to s2 capture or forward it goes to s1 capture or forward capture or forward here we can see it goes to pc4 and uh, get the mac address of pc4 capture or forward it goes to s1 right s2 and it goes back to pc1 yes so now this pc1 or received the mac address of uh, this pc pc4 and here we can see this pc1 and pc4 are in the same vlan vlan 10 right capture or forward now here we can see uh, icmp is forwarding going to s1 goes to s3 pc4 acknowledgement back through uh, s3 s1 s2 and to pc1 and here we can see it's successful so we'll give a capture or forward next is uh, where the pings are successful why yes the pings uh, were uh, successful uh, yes as i told uh, this pc1 and pc4 are in the same vlan that is a uh, vlan 10 so uh, this pc1 uh, is uh, getting the mac address of pc4 and it's able to communicate coming to d examine the simulation panel when the packet or reached s1 why does it also forward the packet to P pc7 yes we have seen that in our event list if you observe s1 oh we will see that s1 right here we can see that uh, s1 sends to pc7 yes so here we can see this uh, pc7 also belongs to vlan 10 that's why uh, that broadcast address uh, uh, sent to pc7 but actually the destination was pc4 so this pc4 uh, sent back the mac address uh, to this pc1 now we will come to part 2 observe broadcast traffic without vlans coming to step 1 clear the configurations on all three switches and delete the vlan database uh, return to real time mode right so we will uh, switch from our simulation mode to real time then delete the startup configuration on all three switches what command is used to delete the startup configuration of the switches yes obviously we can use raise startup config uh, in our privileged exit mode we will erase uh, the startup config coming to s2 cli enable we have raise startup config and now we will come to S1 enable erase start of config coming to S3 enable erase start of config continue yes next is uh, coming to see where is the vlan file stored in the switches obviously it's, it's in the flash uh, with the name vlan.dat coming to d delete the vlan file on all three switches what command deletes the vlan file stored in the switches yes we will see that first of all we will do it in uh, s2 here we have uh, delete vlan.dat yes confirm yes also we will go to s1 here we can see that file with the help of uh, show flash here we can see that file uh, vlan.dat we are we are deleting this file right 
so delete vlan dot dat and coming to s3 here also we can see that file uh, vlan dot dat so we are going to delete that file vlan dot dat confirm now we will come to step 2 reload the switches use the reload command in privileged to exit mode to reset all the switches wait for the entire link to turn green to accelerate this process so click fast forward time located in the bottom yellow toolbar now we will reload the switches first of all coming to s2 here we are going to give a reload confirm coming to s1 enable reload confirm then we will go to s3 enable reload now we will come to step 3 click capture or forward to send a ARP request and pings after the switches are reload and the link lights return to green yes everything is green now the network is ready to forward your ARP and ping traffic select scenario 0 from the drop down tab to return to scenario 0 yes now we are in a scenario 0 then uh, from simulation mode uh, click the capture or forward button to step through the process notice that the switches now forward the ARP request out all ports except the port on uh, which the ARP request was received this default action of switches is why VLANs can improve network performance broadcast traffic is contained within each VLAN when the buffer full window appears click the view previous events button right so coming to our simulation mode here we are going to give a capture or forward capture or forward now we can see uh, this broadcast sends to all the pcs all the nodes capture or forward right right so here we will give view previous events right now we will come to part 3 complete reflection questions coming to the first question if a pc in vlan 10 sends a broadcast message which devices are receive it obviously uh, here all devices um, uh, that are on vlan 10 so we have seen that already uh, when we sent from this pc1 uh, the PCs which are in the same VLAN that is VLAN 10 uh, they will receive this broadcast that is PC 7 and uh, here we can see PC 4 then if a PC in VLAN 20 sends a broadcast message which devices receive it obviously all devices that are on VLAN 20 if a PC in VLAN 30 sends a broadcast message which devices receives it same all devices so that are on VLAN 30 Coming to the fourth question, what happens to a frame sent from a PC in VLAN 10 to a PC in VLAN 30? Obviously, it will be dropped because uh, uh, here itself they say the VLAN is uh, one is 10 and another one is VLAN 30. Coming to the fifth question, in terms of ports, what are the collision domains on the switch? Obviously, here each port in each uh, switch is here, that is S1, S2 and S3. Uh, will be a separate collision domain coming to the last question in terms of ports what are the broadcast domains on the switch yes talking about this uh, broadcast domains on the switch it depends on the VLANs on that particular switch all these same questions uh, these are reflection questions we have seen in the previous uh, packet tracer also Anyway, uh, that's all in this packet tracer activity, investigating a VLAN implementation. Dear friends, if you have any doubt in this packet tracer activity, please comment below. Also, if you like my videos, give a thumb and don't forget to subscribe the channel so that you will get latest uploading video info into your mail. Thank you.